so uh, the next thing I want to try is reading from RDBMS here if I do show databases do not worry I will give you this link ok I will say use retail DB and if I do show tables see there is a database called a retail DB which I created within that these tables are there and there is a table called orders right I think that is what we are reading order items right uh, there is something called order items right. So, if I do a select star from order items oh I have done a limit but I think it should work did you all connect yes right maybe that is what is uh, so yeah we got it so there is around uh, 172,198 rows in this table right so it is a pretty big table not so big and all but some data we have at least. Now, what if you want to read this into spark this table we can do that. Now, if you want to do that first thing you need is the MySQL driver JDBC driver. So, can you check the driver is here in this folder can you see this MySQL connector Java something something this file and I want you to upload this using FTP to your Linux machine. Let me show you. Upload the driver using FTP. See, I have uploaded here. Can you see this? 515. I am just checking. Not this one. I think the name is different. My SQL connector, it will be. Ah, here, here, here. Yeah, this one. Not this one. This is the binaries actually. So this jar file, I want you to uh, upload in your home folder. Using FTP. FTP. Uh, because what we will do, we will start Spark shell and give this jar file to Spark. So Spark will start with this. And within Spark, we will write our connection string. Say that connect to the RDBMS. Give me the table. It will read it. It should ideally read. <laughs> we will see whether it will actually read or not. So, we will start Spark shell. So, normally you will say PySpark. Now, you will say PySpark. Use this jar. This is a driver. So, Spark will start. And within Spark, we will write our connection string for connecting to the DB. What is the username? What is the password? What is the connection string? And it will read the table and create a data frame it should be able to do it scoop is like data transfer utility so here also you are doing data transfer but you are not storing anything you are just bringing the table to spark as a data frame so that you can write sql queries on top of that and typically what we do is that um, so this is very rare use case you are actually reading from rdbms so in mysql you can do that grand privileges for the user so you have to say full grand privileges for this spark user otherwise it will complain. So, uh, if the username now the username is what lab user something. So, lab user should have full grand privileges then only it will not work <laughs> that is one more problem. So, we have I have not actually used it much because the use case is very less but in one of our customers case they had oracle. So, we wanted to read and it did not work because that has n number of other problems driver and all you will get but it will not read at all. So, then he did something uh, and permission issues and all finally, we were able to read the data because his requirement is like uh, he had data in Oracle ok and uh, that was some terabytes of data and already he had a lot of data in a data warehouse that he brought into spark this Oracle data he will not allow to touch you have only read you cannot transfer it actually. So, when he was running join queries he wanted this data to be available. So, initially we did like this later uh, he uh, used some sort of a cache 
caching layer on top of Oracle where it will be already cached. Spark will read it from there and then process it. So this method is not so efficient if you have huge amount of data actually. We did it only once. So once you have the driver, okay, I didn't tell you what we need to do, right? So you have to start the Spark shell like this. Do you have this file called a reading XML uh, JSON XML modified? Yeah. So here you have to say PySpark2, then you say hyphen hyphen master local add this line okay and you will say driver class path uh, and the jar meaning you are just saying that use this particular jar so you are saying that start spark shell and this is the class path driver class path and this is the connector that we have okay and it starts and if you want to read let me first try because all uh, this is uh, so this is jar you are giving here the location is same here it is something called driver class path both you have to give so the arguments are different let me see if i can read okay so how do you read is you say spark dot read there is a method and then you say format is jdbc this is very important okay and url is this that is the connection string uh, then there is something called db table where you have to mention the uh, db dot table you want to read username password dot load now ideally if i do a jdbc df dot show we have the data so this is coming from mysql right this is coming from mysql so you read from mysql directly to spark see how easy it is my whole point is rather than the functionality things are very easy if I have to do this in some other programming language, I could have sit and write, imagine Java, Java can do it easily, but I am saying the functionality is very easy, right? Anybody can read and understand, okay, what is happening. You don't have to explain at all. So we are actually passing two arguments here. One is the jar and one is the driver class path, okay? So ideally the jar is enough if you are running in the local mode. I added it just for the safety. In the yarn mode, it will throw error sometimes, saying that I can't find your class path. So the entire table is in a data frame. This is a data frame, right? I can say any queries I want in Spark. Try this by yourself. Don't trust me unless you can run by yourself. And if you are working in Spark 1, this is different, completely different. You don't have this uh, format JDBC and all. They're very similar, but the commands will be slightly different. There we say uh, you will create a Java object first for system utility object there will say put 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 username is this password is this url is this then call that object that's how you read so in spark 2 only they introduce this method so and i don't know if you start working maybe you start working on a spark 1 cluster right and you may not see this so we are running a spark 2.2 .2 version so here is 2.2 .2. and if i go to spark sql can you see the menu reading rdbms somewhere it will be there jdbc to other databases no so db table the jdbc table that should be read not that anything that is valid a from close of a sql query can be used for example full table you know, sub -query. i think it has to be a table that's what i think db table right and, and uh, of course, I showed you only the basic option. URL is there, DB table is there, driver is there. There are a lot of other things you can have. You can have a partition column, okay? You can have a fetch size, the JDBC fetch size, which determines how many rows to fetch per round trip. These are all performance considerations. Uh, you can say truncate and a uh, lot of other things, right? So we will look at them. Now, last but not least, since lost a lot of you were asking about um, uh, you know, installing Spark, right? I thought I will show this. So, maybe something which you can do, right? Some of you have already done this. You can just visit Databricks website and there is an option called a Try Databricks, a button, okay? Just click here, Try Databricks. Uh, Databricks gives you a free trial of their platform. This is for 14 days only. So, don't do this. If you are signing up for this, you have to use your credit card and all. There is a community edition here. Okay. So, community edition, you can just say get started. Uh, 
give your uh, uh, username, password, no credit card required. And once you sign up, because I, I have already saved that uh, account in my laptop, okay, this is, this is the one. So once you create uh, your uh, account, you should be able to log in like this. Yeah, so once you uh, sign up, okay, uh, you will be able to do like this, you will get uh, this page, okay. And the important feature is that you can just go to this clusters, there is a menu called clusters uh, and you can simply click on create a cluster. So click on create a cluster, give some name and uh, it supports up to uh, 231 Spark. There is a major version 4.2 that is Databricks version, do not worry, Spark version is 2.3.1. So let us say you want 2.2.0, you can say something like this 2.2.0 and Python version do you want 2 or 3, okay, whichever you want you can select uh, and this do not make any changes, say create a cluster and now the cluster is getting created. So this will give you a single machine on AWS with 6 GB RAM and it is totally free, right. So and it is very uh, fast also, I mean the cluster creation and all ideally it will not take much time. You can see the Spark UI from here if you are running something on this cluster. You can stop it and delete it, the cluster. So I was running some clusters previously and you can see it is here. So you have this cluster menu like here, yeah, so now the cluster is running, I will just get back to you, okay. The cluster is running and you can go to the Spark UI and this is the Spark UI. Uh, as of now, there is nothing in Spark, right. Now the question is that how do you work with the cluster? So first thing you can do is that you can upload your data. So just go to this data part here and here you can simply say create a table. So they store everything in a table format. And let us say we want this JSON file, right? Where is it? People.json. Just drag and drop it here. So, and this will be the location. Just copy this location. This is where uh, that will be. And if you want to work, uh, go to this home page and you can create a notebook, new notebook. Uh, name is something languages. Python, Scala or R, we will choose Python, cluster is the cluster running, create and df equal to spark.read.json, this json file we have the data right. So this is good for uh, practice, it is absolutely free first of all, right. But the point is if you start, if you create this cluster and you do not touch the cluster for 120 minutes, they will delete it, right. <laughs> so otherwise they should also get something, right. If you are not using it, they will delete it. But I think that is not a big deal because uh, let them delete the cluster, your code and all will be saved. If you create a notebook like this, it will be persistent. Data you can have in your laptop or something. Whenever you want to upload and you say run it, right? I, I feel it is good. You can use it in your all uh, exploration. So a lot of people wanted to install Spark and mess with Spark, right? <laughs> so this is your answer, one thing. And uh, a, a good amount of documentation is there. Please, please uh, read through the documentation, right? So there is read documentation. And you can just go through their documentation. 